Hello everyone, my name is Ilhan Sehan Kwok and I'm going to talk about research on detecting the spider frame of actions in video. Uh, rather than detect all the frames of the behavior, we're only interested in detecting the spider frame of an action. For example, we are interested in the first frame of pitcher strikes with the ball or the first frame of mouse ball leaves its approach. In this work, we focus on detecting the starting frame of actions associated with a mouse attempting to do a food pellet. Neuroscientists are interested in this actively detecting the starting behavior in order to correlate the action with brain activity. They also felt that the starting frame of these actions were often easier to later consistently than the end of the behavior. For this task, we collected the data from mice attempting to do a food pellet. The videos were recorded in near IR and at 500 frames per second. Each attempt is recorded from two different angles. There are six labels actions associated with the task, and the behaviors can occur more than once within a video. The mouse may fail to grab the food pellet and try to reach again. <coughs> Here is an example of the hand open behavior. The start of the hand open behavior is when the mouse curls its fingers outward and begins to reach for the food pellet. This is an example of the grab behavior. The start of the grab behavior is when the mouse fingers start to curl back towards the food pellet. Our goal is to detect the start of the behavior within 10 frames of the ground truth location, where 10 frames is deemed close enough from a user study. We would like to avoid having multiple predictions around the ground truth location, and we would like to handle cases where there are multiple different true starts that are close together. We will treat the predictions in ground truth locations as an assignment problem, where we want to match the predictions to the ground truth. The model we use for our problem is a bi-direction LSTM. The input to our LC will be video-based features such as the output of the last day of the IPV network. For each frame of the video, the network will predict whether or not an action is starting. For this test, we proposed two structural losses of the optimized assignment problem. We created a matching loss based on the Hungarian algorithm, which penalizes first predictions while rewarding accurate and confident predictions. We also use a variant of the loss team to approximate the assignment problem. Finally, we used a per frame loss as baseline. This is an example of video showing the results. Here, the mouse successfully grabs and meets the food ball on its first try. There are four rows lines below the video of the mouse from top to bottom. The rows show ground truth starts, loss to predictions, match predictions, and MSC predictions. In this case, all losses do fairly well at predicting the start of the behavior. However, the per frame loss predicts two main openings. This is another example of video showing the results. The loss in the loss performs the best well, and is lost as many next predictions. Thank you for listening and hope you come to our class. Combine this information for prediction. But how can 
going to set up the best priorities. So for that, mm -hmm, suspense. <laughs> we used a second level of temporal attention, which is temporal priority attention, in charge of uh, uh, computing the weight for soft weighting uh, the features extracted at different priorities. So in conclusion, we have proposed a general model uh, for presenting uh, segments and their relationships, two levels of temporal attentions for focusing on the specific segments, but also on the different uh, priorities. We made experimentation on two public data sets from NTU and NUCA, and uh, we overperformed over uh, the state of the art with accuracy bigger than 93%. For most, more information, please visit our posture, and of course, the code is available. Thank you. Hello, I'm James Willis from uh, NEC Corporation. I'm the second author of this paper, and we present the joint work with NDS, the Central University of Singapore, talking about the Swiss assisted degree cameras. You can see here the Swiss assisted degree, assisted degree cameras. And this is what we uh, take go to challenge. The first one is the appearance of people at the front, which makes the network which on the standard videos unable to check useful features. For this, we also must have to change from the automatic direction of video to an anonymous video. Uh, for the second challenge, due to the wide field of view of Swiss system video capture many people performing actions at the same time, we propose a new framework to uh, handle the multiple person action definition. Um, here is what we did um, to transform the omnidirectional to uh, an anomaly. Um, you can see uh, here inside the uh, uh, fisher eye camera, the spinning eyes are they are connected to the ground with intercepting the single point. So we can do the electrical uh, transformation really easily. And here is the framework of our uh, multi person action recognition and models. We first input 16 continuous. A phrase from the original video uh, to a 3D version uh, network to get the impact At the same time, we apply the master assay to get the bounding box of each person and to get the binary mask to identify the location inside the, the camera. Then we uh, apply our multiple label, multiple uh, intents, then we have uh, at the bottom layer. Uh, we propose to a uh, new first function to change the uh, uh, network based on our ground to uh, a video with us. Okay. Uh, I think I'm supposed to go with the details, sorry. <laughs> Please come to my poster, number eight. Um, yeah, here's our data set. And in this data set, um, we provide 10 new scenarios. Uh, for example, the study we have gate, lobby, and, and station, and uh, chase station like the, the convention store, and the are interested in this uh, our poster number 8. Okay, we contributed that to the community. And here's the experiment result. Uh, our framework uh, outperformed the uh, other related works to reach the, uh, the uh, accuracy and yield to uh, 60%. And then the right hand side you can see this uh, uh, we apply the grab cap to identify the, uh, the result of uh, each person, like the world, J, Run, and Ray and Jack, the government's case. It is coming to our poster number A to see all of that. Thank you.
to address these issues, we propose to generate attention maps for each actor and surrounding contexts. Conditioning on the actor, these attention maps alter the relevant contextual locations on the future map. This allows us to effectively model the surrounding context while focusing on the actor as well. Our model extracts a future record from the actor and combines it with contextual features at every spatial temporal location. These combined features are used to generate actor's attention at that specific index. The attention generation repeat is repeated for every spatial temporal indices. Since the attention generation is repeated, this can be implemented by calling up the actor features into the same chain as the context features and using one by one by one formulations. This implementation is efficient compared to generating this for every index sequentially. This here's the architecture for our model. For the ITP future map, the attention maps are generated for each individual actor. These attention maps are multiplied with the original input future map for each actor, and this amplifies this operation amplifies the future from relevant regions to the input context, while that may be relevant regions to that actor. Compared to the traditional approach, our attention architecture improves the performance by 5 MAP on A of the set and 8 on the J time of the data sets. More experiments are available in the paper. In addition to these results, we provide a complete real time framework for action detection. Uh, here, the model is analyzing my actions in real time in our lab, and more videos are available in GitHub, and I will be also showing this video on the post session at post time. Yeah, here it's detecting that I'm carrying an object, I'm opening, I'm bending over, picking up an object, and I'm testing out the drinking action here. Reading. <laughs> and very awkward <laughs> right I thank you.
Hello everyone, uh, this is Ashtapur and today I am going to talk about our work on newly supervised temporal electron localization using deep magnetic learning. Uh, temporal electron localization is an important issue for us, uh, which refers to detecting point and one action occurs in the video. Although there have been impressive works on action localization, most of them require full annotation of action instances, which is very hard to get and uh, difficult to annotate. Uh, hence, our goal here is to uh, develop an actual localization method without uh, full temporal annotation. That is, during training, we only need the uh, video level action instances, and during testing, we have to determine both the action instances and also the temporal localization of those action instances in the video. So, here is an example of what we achieved so far. Uh, this example in the bottom figure. The green denotes ground detection and the red color denotes our detected action. Uh, you can see that uh, our action localization method can detect most of the actions quite well, although it was trained without any kind of uh, temporal supervision during training. So, this is our proposed model. It consists of three modules one feature extraction module, classification module, and metric module. In the feature extraction module, we used a pre trained IoT network to extract key together video features and then embed these features into an embedded space. Then, in the classification module, we utilized and we developed a novel EDC loss uh, to uh, divide the whole video into segments and combine these segment level features into a unique video level, video level source. However, only using the classification module does not we see that only if the classification model does not produce good localization as it focuses on two narrow parts of the video. As we also propose the metric learning module, uh, we developed a uh, inspired metric from ideas from many different research. So in this module, we developed a mechanism to calculate distance between the videos. Uh, if the videos contain similar activity, then the distance should be low, and if the video contains uh, different activity, the distance should be high. And the main thing in our metric learning module comes from the words of the classification module and we also uh, showed that the real coupling between the classification module and the metric learning module actually creates a boost in our algorithm that, uh, that increases, the, increases the performance, global action performance alone. So this is, uh, we evaluated our algorithm on the most important data set, uh, which is around 200 training videos and 113 testing videos with our 15 activity instances per video. And we, we uh, outperform all these two plant methods in this data set. Uh, we also achieved very competitive performance in activity and 1.2 data set. Uh, so if you want to know more about our methods, please come to our poster. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Sanjay from Sanjay Dayo, presenting our dynamic motion representation for human action information. So the idea here is to capture dynamic subject and motion in activities. Um, so what we did is we started uh, extracting human codes, uh, heat maps from individual frames, stack them together, and feed them into a dynamic encoder, and then turn the screen and on top of that to classify actions in the case. Um, so why did we do so? Um, so set of arguments for space to use uh, as two independent frames or two independent sources of information, while post still has a lot of information, so it needs more attention. And also, um, since the videos can be varying in terms of length, the specific size video representation model is needed. Um, so, how did we do so? Um, we actually started the uh, extracting post heat maps um, from the video and then uh, encode the post heat maps um, using a dynamic encoder to generate a video level, video level uh, representation. And then it turns in an on top of that. So the assumption here is dynamic motion of human body can be modeled as a linear time invariant system, uh, model time representation or projection of model motion modeled by a linear or basically can be modeled as the same linear auto versus model as the actual motion. So we capture the dynamic of dynamic of human post um, to explore the on invariants and this is the um, can be found by a uh, sparse distribution form. Uh, so the architecture behind this is actually um, uh, trained on encoder Sparse encoding uh, layer, uh, it's a shadow network. Um, we both uh, do action recognition and action localization in our experiments. Um, here is some of the results for action recognition. Uh, we were dealing with this uh, full uh, frame. Um, we do a motion study and detect or show the impact of dyna motion where we convert it against the uh, two instant networks B and B double dyna motion as a third stream. Uh, we also might ask actually why not all the CNNs? Uh, 
this line. Uh, we had to convert it into 3D convolutional network training on four signals, as well as our own model training on four coordinates. And we show that uh, the giving frame basically has an augmentation uh, method that can help in training. Um, so finally, this is the action convolution results of compared against say all your models on um, uh, three main data sets, um, where we add uh, post signals information as a third stream. We also show the action normalization results. Um, here we actually do uh, activity net task B, task 1, uh, where we use bounding box per person as the input to our model, not full uh, frame as the input basically. And this is some of the results from AVA uh, that can be shown here. Uh, so to conclude, um, I actually uh, introduced a new representation, video representation model for action integration, where we use the dynamic encoder to learn from the class and the train a shadow network on top of it um, to classify the action. This is being combined with the RGB and output flow. Thank you for your attention. See you at the next session. Hi, my name is Andrew Kay, and I'm here to present our work in image to video domain adaptation using web supervision. This is work co-authored with Yael Song from MSI. Modern approaches for video action recognition require large amounts of latent data. In this work, we explore leveraging plentiful webly supervised data instead. However, there are two main issues with directly using webly supervised data for training. Our model accounts for both of these issues, uh, label noise and domain shift. Our model proceeds in two stages. We first learn a 2D CNN from the noisy web images transfer the learned uh, spatial filters to a 3D CNN, and then continue learning a video model using the web, noisy web videos. In addition, we also include an uh, adversarial component to account for the domain shift between web images and videos, as well as between the web domain and target video domain. When training the video model, we decompose the spatial temporal block into a spatial followed by temporal stage, as in the R2 plus 1D model. We initialize and fix the spatial weights learned from the image model. However, if we do this, we must deal with the problem of covariate shift, since we have now have learned weights interleaved with unlearned weights. To alleviate this, we initialize the temporal weights to zero and add a residual connection so that temporal weights can be learned more gradually. We found that adding this residual connection is important for good performance. To deal with label noise, we add an attention component by referencing the target domain and weighting the batch. Intuitively, images that look more like the target domain are given higher weight. For example, if we are learning a concept such as dog walking, Images with high weights shown on the left appear more realistic, uh, more realistic examples of the concept, while images with lower weight shown on the right are less realistic and may contain mostly text or appear cartoonish. We also evaluate on the UCF one-on-one data set, and our results are competitive with state-of-the-art for webly supervised approaches. However, we note that webly supervised approaches still lag behind fully supervised. Uh, we presented a webly supervised model that learns from both web images and videos. In particular, we learn a 2D spatial followed by 3D temporal stages, and our model accounts for both label noise and domain shift. Thank you.
It's an hourglass network. Which we show four blocks here. Each block has an STGCN meter followed by a stridic convolution, another STGCN, another stridic convolution, followed by two deconvolution layers. The STGCN layer has a spatial convolution, a temporal convolution, and a relative nonlinearity depicted as blue, green, and purple over here. The stridic convolution brings the, feet, uh, the size down to half, and deconvolution brings it back to the original size. These blocks are repeated multiple times, and this helps in the construction of the hourglass structure. We show our results here. We experiment with CAT120 and charades. CAT120 is simple data set that gives the graph itself along with its features. Using the same graph, but just using our GCN technique, we were able to improve the results by about 5% compared to the state of the art. Charades is a more complicated data set. It doesn't get any graphs, so we have to build it. We experimented with both BGG and I3B. Uh, using BGG and our graph architecture, we were able to get about 2% more than the state of the art. Using additional features, we got further 1% improvement. And using I3B, the results were overall better. It's just that adding additional features did not help. Also, SuperEdux does better than us, but they use attention, whereas we don't. So hopefully, adding attention would help us improve numbers. These are some of our qualitative results. So as you can see, it does look like she's holding a phone or a camera or a glass, but over, like, over time, the network through her actions learns to recognize that she's actually eating or holding some food. Next, she will turn, and it does look like she's looking outside the window, which is what the network predicts, but it doesn't predict that she's switching on and off the light. Thank you. Please visit us at our poster.
if one of the guys shows that, oh, that's a performance. Like, they are going to be in RTD, that's not. We are going to do with it all the process of one of the
And we used the adversarial domains to make it to join the AI domains in order to plan for this. Here are the experimental results. All the numbers here are better this uh, larger. We use MSTCN as the baseline model since it's the current state of the art, and our methods are built upon MSTCN. With LTDA, we have some improvement over the baseline. With NTDA, the performance is further improved. This shows that by joining the AI and domain into multiple time scales, we can effectively reduce phase or temporal variations and increase the performance for action segmentation. Here we show the comparison and visualizations. The comparison is more clear after we highlight some parts. This is an example from the GTEA data set. And this is another example from the 50 science data set. And then one more example from the practice data set. To summarize this work, we provide an effective method that utilizes unlimited data to help action segmentation. By adding domain and multiple temporal scales, our method and TDA significantly outperforms the current state of the art uh, action segmentation method. Thank you. And the motion features are created by applying a scan to optical flow frames. 
With these two strings, we can learn both spatial and temporal features. Over in recent work, it's been shown that the two stream architecture still provides performance benefits even when both strings are previous DNNs. The previous DNNs have spatial temporal filters, and therefore, conceptually, they should be able to learn spatial temporal features. In this case, we ask whether the two stream architecture is still necessary, and if not, how can we combine these two parallels? parallel streams into just a single model. Eliminating the separate motion stream will provide significant performance benefits since optical flow can be possibly reviewed. So to do this, we propose a D3D, a training scheme in which the motion stream is used as a teacher network in order to train a spatial stream. During training, the spatial stream attempts to produce features which match that of the temporal stream while also minimizing its own error on the training set. During inference, we then discard the teacher network, leaving us with only one stream and therefore no need to compute optical flow during inference. We find that D3D consistently outperforms equivalent single stream models on a variety of tasks, including kinetics, HMDD51, UCI101, and AVA. In addition, it performs on par with two stream models, indicating that much of the benefits of two streams can be achieved with just one stream. And as a bonus, this approach is typically less expensive than two stream models because we only have one stream and no need to compute optical flow during inference. We additionally perform analyses to judge the quality of the motion features learned by D3D. To do this, we attempt to decode optical flow using the framework framing decoder applied to the features that were learned with D3D. The idea behind this is uh, if we can accurately reproduce optical flow from the features in D3D, then we can say that these features contain adequate motion information to mimic the temporal stream. We find that D3D does indeed improve these motion features when compared to equivalent models which are not trained using distillation. In summary, we propose a training stream scheme which uses distillation and combining of the optical flow streams into a single or the only stream. And we show that this approach improves motion representations and performance. Uh, thank you for your time, and please come talk to me about poster if you have any um, more questions. Good morning, everyone. I'm a friend of Dr. Westhofer, and I'm here to present his work. So, I've auditioned and worked for a skeleton based human vaccine recognition. This work is done with his colleague, Mara, and his advisor, Dr. Lee, and Dr. Bush at UCF. Let's begin with the problem setting. Skeleton based vaccine recognition is only based on key points of human body, such as joints. As additional appearance information from an image is not available, the key knowledge to learn is the spatial temporal correlation of each joint. The motivation comes from the traditional scenario where I know which are based on local activations and propagate them to next layers or cells. Unlike those methods, I saw the tension that work towards the transformer model and directly correlate all possible sequence inputs. The figures shown here are proposed networks. The top figure shows the older architecture. As shown in the video, it's divided into k segments, and each segment is processed with one of the same models. Then the final classification scores are merged from each segment output. Segment grid 1 is a baseline model with concatenated position and motion key point data. Segment version 2 is designed to capture different representation for different subjects in a scene, while segment grid 3 is to learn different representations. Each sand variant has an equator to extract row of features from the row joint data. Two inputs are used. One is a bit network network with non-linear activation, and the other is a CNN-based small network. The bit network network just converts the input joint factor to higher dimension. Given the inputted data, the sand block connects all possible sequence pairs and enables short and long range correlations. The sand block consists of one partition and then layer and multiple center cell partition layers. All output from cell, each cell partition layer are merged and global average planes applied to their high level of representations. We experiment uh, on two other speed layers, that NTU, IGPD, and Kinetics. As shown in the table, the proposed method outperforms the CDF method, which are based on iron, CNN, or graph convolution network. This results show that the proposed models benefit from long and short range temporal correlations. Uh, we also visualize the tension output from learned model given uh, different years. As 
has shown offered two roles to scan action performed by a different subject as similar attention patterns. The different patterns are attributed to many reasons like speed of motion with different camera views. Also shown the rail at the bottom row, the correlated frames are near to far. Thank you for your attention. Well, GCN is only an n-dimensional vector, but in our method, the output 
to is uh, an account D dimensional matrix. Here is a number of action classes and T is a time mix. So this is an uh, overview of all those functions for optimizing creation of uh, network for single construction optimization. So it enables the flame containing specific actions to achieve higher scores than those that do not contain specific actions. So to utilize our build for multi-class action localization, we expanded uh, the output dimension of our model and performed a real function. Uh, here, if I can, uh, so I can uh, uh, that was indicating whether each instance is or not. So these are results of uh, uh, actual localization of testing videos. In this video, the color window represents where the actions are included. And these are uh, result uh, of uh, comparison of the scores estimated by the conventional method and the provost method. We confirm that there are high scores for the frames that are important for determining the, the action and low scores for the other frames. Thank you. On the left, you can see the TCD visualization of the representations obtained by our computerized protein. It shows that the model run IPV semantic without clouds. On the left, at the right, you can see our protein improves over 20 years scratch. And the performance gap is larger and less labeled data received. For more details, we can go to see our
In this video, you can see that the best tracker for some specific data sets is worse than the others for other data sets. And in our study, we try to realize a moment tracker for any data. Then, let me talk about our main strategy. The key idea of our method is the application of multiple trackers. When a tracker is in a target location every frame, we run multiple trackers <coughs> in parallel and aggregate their estimations. However, in general, we cannot know which online tracker will show good performance. Thus, it is still difficult to realize the online key tracker using simple allocation algorithms. In our proposed method, we have solved the problem by a new machine rigor. At the end of the video, we define a tracker with the lowest total tracking error as the best tracker who you should follow. And the regret is defined as a total error difference between ours and the best tracker. This difference literally represents the regret and you should take at least the best tracker than ours. With our appropriate obligation strategy, first, we can adaptively aggregate any trackers in any videos. We don't need any assumptions for trackers or videos. Second, we can theoretically guarantee our performance in terms of regret. Finally, we have shown that we can experimentally achieve state of the art. From now, I will briefly explain the theoretical guarantees of our method. With our application strategy, the regret of our method is upper bounded as like this. This upper bound allows ours to follow the best tracker in theoretically. Here is our tracking example. As you can see from the error back of both, the best performing tracker drastically changes in the video. And our algorithm achieves relatively low error by adaptively rating such trackers. <coughs> In experience with various tracking datasets, our method not only achieves similar performance as the best tracker, but also the best performance depending on videos. More details can be found on our poster. Please come and discuss it with us. Thank you. Lucas R model is able to anticipate changes to both object scale and velocity.
we compute displacement error and IOU metrics. Standard art forms existing methods across all metrics consistent. Our model also generalizes to the MOT17 dataset without fine tuning. Our code and dataset is available online. We'll search online for multiple object formats. Thank you.
Our proposed method is to first perform inverse rectification on the projected pattern to allow for the alignment of the pattern points from the camera's vertical edge or lines. Typically, the structured leg pattern will be similar to, to image leg and captured and rectified to produce image E, which is in the bottom left. If inverse rectification is performed on the pattern, image E in the top right is produced. When this is projected, captured, and rectified, we get image F in the bottom right, and the pattern points are aligned with the other four lines. This means the correspondence matching becomes a constant time, time table lookup, decreasing the computation time considerably. Finally, a real real time point cloud example can be seen in the left image here, image A. Oh, sorry, image A is the raw camera image of the scene, and B e is the extracted 3D point cloud of the same scene. On the right is the table of the variations of the proposed method, where the best performing method is our two-phase search with cache. This achieved an average depth calculation time of 368.8 uh, microseconds, while extracting 4,315 depth points from the image. Thank you, and if you have any questions, feel free to see me at my post. Thank you. 